Howdy, how's it going? My name's Dabby Chappie, and it's time to get furry, because we're gonna be talking about the one thing that can bring hippie girls, edgy boys, and degenerates together. Wolves. What wolves? Werewolves. Today, I'm gonna be talking about lycanthropes, what they are, where to find them, and what to do when one sees your newborn and decides to end their character arc in the absolute worst way possible. As always, keep in mind that the majority of this is just my opinion, so if you still believe that alpha wolves exist, and that it's a good idea to base your fragile personality off of it, feel free to play your games however you want. But before we begin, you know them, you love them, it's an ad! Do you enjoy cosmic horror, magnificent mazes, and infinite mansions? Then you'll want Lament of the Widow, a horror adventure in the infinite manner. Lament of the Widow takes adventurers through the setting of Moorhouse, a mysterious and sinister world crafted out of one never-ending mansion, filled with grotesque monsters, cursed and powerful items, and over 100 pages of secrets to be uncovered under every rug. Plus, for those looking for a quick dive without any fuss, Lament of the Widow acts as an introductory adventure for third-level characters that's sure to leave you shaking in your sabaton. Click the link in the description below to visit the Kickstarter to pledge today, and refer your friends to earn 25% of your total referred pledges. Lament of the Widow. Roughly 100 pages of infinite fun. But with that out of the way, let's begin. So, a werewolf is a big old dog person who, on all levels, including physical, is a wolf. And every full moon, they bring out their wolfy side and go on a rampage as a monstrous anthro OC in an effort to induct other people into the fandom by giving them a love bite. Said bite applies a curse to whoever receives it, forcing them to undergo the same transformation every full moon and automatically signing them up for a new DeviantArt account. Technically, the curse makes those afflicted with it more worried about mauling people to death than actually spreading the curse around. But since biting is a common symptom of werewolf immolation, the distinction is narrow, and it means that those who survive a werewolf attack often have a lot more trouble to look forward to. But it isn't all bad. Those who suffer from restless dog syndrome will find that the curse protects them from physical harm, rendering them resistant to weapons like knives and hammers, just like a real wolf. The downside is that, like I said, those resistances are turned against your fellow man when the moon rises, and even when the moon is only half-baked, you'll still be left with a sour disposition as the curse changes your alignment to that of a bad dog. That said, not wanting to give all the fun to the middle school wolf girl, the curse of lycanthropy comes in many different flavors, including rat, tiger, bear, and boar. In fact, the term werewolf is Old English for man-wolf, as in a man with all the powers of a wolf, but obviously, if you're creating a game where people transform into many different animals, other than canines, having wolf in the name is gonna get confusing. So D&D opted to use the more ambiguous term lycanthrope when referring to its shifty shifters, with lycanthrope being a Greek term that means wolf person, so we really haven't fixed much, but at least our wrongness is gender neutral. Anyway, each instance of animal canthropy has its own animalistic nature and not all of them are evil, so while werewolfism turns you into a bloodthirsty monster regardless of your usual disposition, being transformed into something like a bear isn't all that bad, because werebears have a natural tendency to be good, which is what makes them so insistent on preventing forest fires, and why they're such good fiddlers. This doesn't apply to the full moon, though. When the cheese wheel rises, all lycanthropes flip out and turn into rage machines, no matter what animal they are. But some wywolves learn to manage their transition by isolating themselves away from people, or chaining themselves to something really heavy and hoping that it holds. Usually, these tactics are done by the good-aligned animals, and it's weird to think that different variations of the curse can be used to rewrite your genetic code to the side of good, as if a naturally inconsiderate person has to constantly fight off the rising urge to hold a door open for other people. In that sense, living with a curse is something that a lot of word creatures end up just growing accustomed to, and while lycanthropy can be just as dangerous as something like vampirism, it's often seen in a more sympathetic light because, at least outwardly, the curse only manifests once a month, meaning curse bearers can still live a socially acceptable life sans for one day. The other days are spent preparing for those monthly excursions and learning to either fight or embrace the monster side. Those who fight against their nature are less affected by the alignment shift, but they don't get all the cool goodies that come with finally feeding those wolves inside you, which include taking on some of the animal's physical traits, and even being able to shape-change at will, both into the full animal form, and into a semi-animal-slash-human hybrid that combines the best of both worlds and makes people ask upsetting questions about your family's lineage. For these lichens, the curse isn't a curse. It's a gift, and the only downside is that, no matter how in tune with your wild side you get, the image of the full moon will still lead you to flip out. And it's for that reason that most people choose to find a solution to the curse that involves not cursing anymore. After all, they're werewolves, not swearwolves. Luckily for them, because it's a curse, they could spend months or years battling and struggling to find the seemingly impossible solution, never getting any closer and almost giving up hope, only for some random 5th level cleric to walk into town, bop him on the nose to instantly end the curse, and then stroll on out of there and back to their Tuesday. For those with the magical means, lichen bites are trivial at best, and some wizards even voluntarily take on the curse because they know that they can handle it, while the Joe Schmoes without robes and wizard hats have to resort to drastic measures, like cutting off the bitten appendage right when they get bit before the curse can spread throughout the body. Also, 
when a daddy furry and a mommy furry love each other very much, a were-stork might come down with a new furry baby for them, and that child will forever be a lycanthrope, as the curse ties itself to the child's soul. Almost all were-children grow up to embrace their curse, since it's not like they knew anything else, and they can be seen less like humanoids infected with a disease, and more like their own species of lycanthropy. They're lichens, that's just what they are, and they lead the world in most unsettling Google searches. Now, let me tell you how to kill them. Fighting a werewolf can be tough. On top of being big, muscly wolf boys, their bodies are resistant to normal weaponry, effectively doubling the amount of effort that you have to put into killing one. Their not-so-secret secret, however, is that they can easily be killed if you strap yourself with anything silver. Weapons are the best thing to cast it in, because unlike vampires, werewolves don't burn at the touch of fancy dinner plates, it's just that their resistances won't function. Once you're all geared up to take down werewolves with silverware, you're going to have to pick the opportune time to. Now keep in mind that, for the majority of its life, a werewolf is going to look and behave just like a normal dog, with the obvious clues that something's wrong, being that they have a strange animosity for the mailman, and that they keep taking once-a-month camping trips into the woods with a bunch of other hairy, muscly guys. What I'm saying is that, unless you're defending yourself from a literal wolfman, most people are going to see the act of you murdering a guy as an act of murder, and then they'll act accordingly. Because of this, the best time to face down a werewolf is often when they're most obviously a monster, the full moon. During this time, their true nature is revealed, and they can't shift back, so the townsfolk will probably be cool with you killing the big furry wolfman. While they're stuck in a state of bloodlust, werewolves won't be able to think clearly or formulate articulated plans, and so they'll have to resort to their base instincts of fight or flight, which gives you the upper hand if you're a big brain. The biggest downside to fighting during a full moon, however, is that because they can't think straight, you can't reason with a werewolf or try to talk it down. When it sees you, all it will think is, whoa, hey, it's an animal. Weird how it walks on two legs. Anyway, I'm gonna eat it now. And then it will prioritize voring you to death. Finally, there is one strain of lycanthropy that must be treated more seriously than all others, the curse of the loop guru. While technically it's still a werewolf, the loop guru spent so much of its time eating Scooby snacks that the curse was all like, look man, I know wolves don't actually do that alpha thing, but we're gonna make an exception for you. The ultimate muscle OC, loop guru possess a bite so potent with the dogism that those bitten are completely unable to get their curse reversed via magic, not even a wish spell. The only way to end the werewolf curse is to find the loop guru that bit you and slay it. Only then will the magical cures become available. But that's easier said than done. Loop Guru may not have the wolf resistances that normal were creatures do, but they have way more health and a healing factor that lets them fight, run away, and then jump back into the fight while you're still licking your wounds. Their wolfish form is also a dire wolf, which is like a regular wolf, but more dire. And they have legendary actions, resistances, and abs, so no amount of rolled up newspaper can stave them off. Your best option is to retreat, tell the townsfolk not to let their cats go outside, and then get used to having a lot in her hair on your body. But that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, check out all my social media in the description below, and maybe support me on Patreon so that I can afford to go to the barber for all of this new hair on my body. But yeah, Davy out.